what do you know? I'm back. But I'm back, and we're on unit three now. Three. I gotta get that right in front of the camera there. That's pretty exciting, right? We only have five units, so we're in unit three. We're breezing through this stuff. So hopefully you guys are like, <laughs> next unit, photosynthesis was a tough one, right? There's a lot of stuff to know. But now on to some more fun stuff. Um, we're gonna talk about these lovely things here. And here's kind of a joke. <laughs> Single cell phones, I can't hear you, you're breaking up. We'll talk about cell division. All right, but here is the big picture. I'm going to break this unit up, not only into the sections, because um, I will be breaking up my mini lessons into sections, but they're gonna be micro, micro mini lessons because maybe you don't need some of the stuff. So this first lesson is gonna actually go over microscopes. As you can see, there are three things here. So it will be a short, quick little clip on microscopes, and we'll talk about some of those things. Um, the next one, so part two, will be actually on the cell, and we'll talk extensively about the cell. And then we'll talk about the barrier, which is actually, I believe, section two. So section one will have two parts, and section two will probably be in one. So let's move on. Let's go into, first of all, my favorite pictures. You guys know that I love pictures, and I just think this is kind of a cool pic, right? Um, kind of that three-dimensional look. So we're going to talk about these cells. Obviously, you can't see any of the organelles in there yet because we're going to talk about those. But um, this would be something that you'd do with a light microscope, which we'll get to shortly. But how about some visuals? So to start us off, you guys know, oons, 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 I love music. So watch this video because it's got a good little tune. And it tells you a little bit about cells and what we've got ourselves into for the next week or so. Especially born. The kind without a nucleus, the first to come. They run in the world, they're even single cells, and they don't have any membrane bound. They live everywhere and have two domains. Bacteria and archaea, yeah, they're not the same. They reproduce by budding and binary vision, all just so they can perform cell division. These cells are real, yeah, they ain't folk. They're just you carry out. Cells are the unit of life that we have on this earth. You're made up of a bed and two birds. The cells are light and life is so young. If you don't know about them, then you're bad. They can see us running the show. Now there's a kind of cell that makes up all of us. It even has a nucleus. A nucleus. It even has organelles prokaryotes don't have. Organelles such as chloroplasts. When they reproduce, mitosis is in use. Then the cells split into two. Cells are the unit of life that we have on this earth. Made up of the Cells of life and life is If you don't know about it, then you are bad. Cells are the unit of life that we have on this earth. You're made up of the death and two birds. The cells of life and life is so young. If you don't know about them, then you're bad. What do you think? I hate those ads, but oh well. Still, kind of cool. So you guys hopefully heard something major in there that was repeated over and over again, the unit of life. We'll talk about that in next part. So, woohoo! Did that make you dizzy? You wanna barf? Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about microscopes. So, as you can see, we're gonna cover a couple of things, but first of all, get a load of those things. Those are dust mites. Lovely, right? Can't see them unless you have a microscope. And then down here, well, you can't really see that either, but cells. Um, so we're gonna talk about how we see cells. I'm gonna go over the microscope ever so briefly, um, and then we'll move on to the cell in part two. 
So the first thing, though, is you guys have to understand magnification, okay? Magnification is really important because things are really tiny, including our cells. Our cells are microscopic, and you can't view them unless you have some sort of a tool, aka microscopes. But I want to go over the magnification before I go over the microscope in general. And this is magnification with a light microscope. So these are the ones that you're going to be using, you would use if we were in a brick and mortar school. Here we get to do lots of virtual things. Um, but when you go to college as well, you'll be using light microscopes. Um, and the cool thing is, they're pretty easy to understand. You have three different lenses and they're labeled on there and you'll see a picture where you might be able to catch a little bit of the label. But each of those lenses are labeled. One will say 4x, okay? That would be your shortest lens. Your next longest one would be 10x, and then your longest lens that um, you'll see on there is 40x. That's high power. We call it scanning, low power, high power. So basically, you have a lens also where you're viewing. So when you put your eye down in there and you're like, okay, uh -huh, I can kind of see, um, which you're actually not supposed to close any eye. But when you're looking through there, you actually have a lens as well. So we multiply these together so you have a magnification of four times what it normally is just by the low lens, basically, or that, that shortest lens. Your ocular lens is always 10x. Obviously, that doesn't change. You're not changing that one. Okay, so you multiply that by 10 and you have 40 times magnification at this scanning power. Low power at 10x, multiply that by 10. Now you have the mag magnification of 100 times what that little cell or whatever might be, okay? High power is 40x times 10, 400 times. So clearly, if you guys have ever done the whole swab your cheek with a little flat toothpick, rub it on a slide, and then you can see as you change those lenses, under high power, you can actually see the nucleus, okay? Because you've magnified that cheek cell 400 times, okay? So let's move on, that's magnification. Conversions, here's something that um, I want you guys to kind of get to know. You're gonna see this over and over again, and although I'm not gonna test you on it a ton, you need to understand this, and you'll see this in chemistry, you'll see this in college, but ultimately you have a base, which would usually be the meter, gram, liter. Those are the main kind of bases that we use. So anytime you're converting, maybe you have a decimeter, centimeter, millimeter, okay? And if you notice, this is a great way to look at it. It's like a stair step, okay? You're going down decimeter would be one-tenth of this base. Centi is one one-hundredth. Milli is one one-thousandth. And if you notice this arrow, it says, to convert to a smaller unit, move the decimal point to the right or multiply, okay? So if you have one meter, you'd move that, that decimal to the right, okay? So you'd have, and I wish I could write, I'm trying to figure out how to write on my little um, screen here, but it's not working quite yet, so be patient with me, that will be coming. But basically, you're moving that decimal to the right one for a decimeter, okay? So you would have um, 10 decimeters in one meter. You'd move it two times, okay? Because you're going down two steps for centimeters. So you'd have a hundred centimeters in one meter because you're moving it two steps down. So take a guess, how many decimal places would you move over if you're looking for how many millimeters are in a meter? Three, you're right. <laughs> you're so smart. Okay, so that means you'd be moving it over three times. That means you would have 1,000 millimeters in a meter, okay? Now the opposite goes here. So if you see the convert to a larger unit, you're gonna move that decimal point to the left or you're gonna divide. So ultimately, if you're looking at how many, let's go to this one, this is pretty common. You're going three steps up to a kilo, okay? If we're looking at a kilometer, okay, or a kilometer. So basically you're moving three decimal places to the left, okay? So how many kilometers are in one meter? Well, you move that over to the left from one. So you actually have 0 .001 kilometers in one meter, okay? So you're moving the opposite. So deca, you're only moving over one decimal. That would be 0.1 decameters in one meter. So this stair step hopefully makes a little bit of sense. Um, you need to make sure you're counting how many steps you're moving. Move that decimal to the left if you're basically converting to a larger unit and move that decimal to the right if you're converting to a smaller unit. And remember, these are your bases. If you need more help with that, please, please note that and then ask me in our live session and we'll talk more about it. We can practice. Okay, 
So there's conversions for you. Now the microscopes, love it, right? So the light microscope produced by light passing through or even reflecting off of the surface of a specimen. So whatever you're looking at, maybe you're looking at red blood cells, maybe you're looking at, um, you know, any kind of cells are, are a great thing to look at. Those are things that can be magnified by a light microscope and you can view them, okay? So, but again, light passes through these things and it's magnified by those lenses. So let's take a look at this picture though. I want you guys to notice that there's some key things here that you guys need to know. Here are the objective lenses that I was speaking of, okay? So this would be your 4X, it's your shortest, okay? This looks to be, I, I'm thinking, this looks to be a little bit longer. This would be your 10X and this would be your 40X lens, okay? Your high power, your low power, or I call it kind of middle power, lower power, okay? Those are the things that you can actually move. You turn them ear, ear, and you're able to, um, you know, see things with greater magnification. But ultimately, you have to adjust them. You have a coarse adjustment knob, which you're really only using with this small objective lens, okay? Otherwise, you're going to crash that stage into your lens and break your specimen and obviously other parts probably as well. So when you get to these higher power objective lenses, you're going to be using this fine adjustment knob, which ever so slightly adjusts the, um, you know, where that stage, which is this part here that you place your uh, specimen on, okay, you put it under these stage clips, and it moves it up or down in order to focus that, okay. You have your light source underneath here, your body tube, here's your ocular lens, so that's where that 10x comes from, that's why we multiply those by. You have your base, you have your light that turns on somewhere. So anyways, those are the main things. Um, your diaphragm is basically how much light is let in. So those are the things that you need to know and you'll be using those um, often from now on through college. Okay, so be aware. Now on to the electron microscopes, really cool. Electron microscopes, I've never used one, I'd love to use one, but ultimately we're using a high energy beam of electrons, hence the name, electron microscope. So the electrons basically are the light source instead of our visible light that we're used to. The beam is focused through electromagnetic lenses instead of through glass lenses. So there's a lot of differences that um, go through these electron microscopes. Not to mention they're really, really expensive in comparison. I mean, not, not saying that a light microscope is cheap, but electron microscope, if you take a look at this picture, well, let's take a look at those words, really big, I just read them, okay? But these picture, this picture, it's a pretty intense microscope, and you're using um, the image that is uh, projected onto this computer screen to actually view it. Sorry, it's a little blurry, but nonetheless, this is an electron microscope. Never worked one, love it. But these are where you see like bacteria. I mean, when we look at this picture right over here, this is by a particular um, my electron microscope. This is viewing bacteria, which we cannot see with a light microscope. They're too small, so it's pretty cool. Okay. All right. So that's it for part one. Um, next time, part two, we'll be going into the cell. All right. Come back and join me.